TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK and all around the world. Because as you can see, we're going to Toronto, Canada. Or I don't know if it's... Yeah, it's Toronto. This is Toronto's Deadliest Gang, NHS, by Sky Boy. Talk to me real quick. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Okay, today we're in the Southside Jane and Finch, connections to be precise, and we'll be looking into the NHS gang that has terrorized these Toronto streets. But before I can do that, I need to explain the history of the neighborhood that created an environment that turns boys into hoodlums. Now, Fergrove Grassways Communities has been home to families since the 1970s. The neighborhood is home to many low-income families, mainly That's from Africa and West Indies background. Fergrove Grassways Community, also known as connections to the locals, as you can probably tell why with how the buildings are connected to each other. It's also called connections due to it being a hotbed of drug users connecting with their dealers. Now on the 28th of July 2013, a function was underway at a crowded Brampton Banquet Hall when shots rang out and the police were called. When the police arrived at 4.30am, they discovered a man suffering gunshot wounds to his chest. He was pronounced dead on the scene. The victim was none other than Ricky Dunkley, who was the brother of Mount Olive J. Noble. The man who killed Ricky was known as Rico Gale. He was a blood from Southside Jane and Finch, Lane to be exact. Rico has been wanted for the murder of Ricky till this day. Police believe he went on a run and is hiding out in Jamaica. Now Mount Olive Yeah, y'all can chalk it up. If y'all ain't found him yet, he's gone. ...were hurting after Ricky was killed and were itching for revenge. Literally on the same day they slid. Now just before 10 p.m., a connections boy known as Skinny Tony was on his bicycle when he was hit multiple times in the parking lot of the York Woods Plaza when he approached two black men in a cream-colored car, possibly a Toyota or a Nissan. The men described by one eyewitness then fled the parking lot. Mount Olive's so-called get-back was on a boy from connections and not Lane, so ultimately they killed him for no reason. Because of his murder, connections would form an alliance with the lane and would go to war with Mount Olive and Driftwood together. Southside Jane and Fitch are notoriously the blood side of Toronto. Skinny Tony was friends with Doovy, who later becomes very pivotal to this story. Skinny Gang was created in his honor. While well, Toronto police have identified the victims of a fatal double shooting in the city's northwest yesterday. They were both teenagers. The CBC's Amanda Margison has the story. This is where one life ended, a teenager just 16 years old. Oh, America still doubts Toronto. I never really doubted Toronto. You know what I'm saying? They right above us. I feel like they can get just as busy. You know what I'm saying? Like, because they right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can get whatever we got. <laughs> Shot dead. His friend, another young man, only 15, also hit. He was rushed to hospital where he later died. It happened after lunch in the courtyard outside a public housing complex full of families. It was just like about maybe four or five sh shots I heard. That's why I thought it was fireworks. But when this neighbor came out of her house, it was too late. But there were witnesses, enough to give police some clues. Police say they're looking for three suspects who fled on bicycles. They say one is a black man and two are from the Somali community. Right now, police are looking at security camera footage from a... Witnesses can tell that? Somalians look black. Now, no, no, don't get me wrong. They do have distinctive characteristics that you can decipher. But damn, you had to be up close and personal to see that. Like from distance, you just see three black dudes. Around this apartment complex, but they also say they need help from people living here. Our investigations are only as good as the people that come forward, and uh, this is a very tragic event. Two young people have lost their lives. Many in the community are reluctant to talk. They've seen gun violence here before, but two boys gone at such a young age is hitting... The two murdered, O'Shea and Kwame, were both from the lane. 
Now many claim Kwame was merely an innocent who happened to grow up in a hood and was close with a few members. As for O'Shea, his friends would go by OK Gang in his honour. Both of their murders were the work of the Driftwood Crips. Now around 2018, JJ created a set known as NHS which stood for Never Had Shit. Members included childhood best friend Kenzo, BK, Doovy to name a few. Before NHS was created, 14 year old BK was already making- So was NHS a blood set or are they just like a, 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 a gang specific to uh, the area? That they just made up that has no allegiance to Bloods, Crips, or anything. Making some noise musically. His first release on the 27th of March 2017, titled Jordan. Well, that was a pivotal moment for Southside Jane and Finch in the information war as their Driftwood Ops dominated the music scene, hence controlled the narrative as own. Like, is NHS a set of a blood? Are they a set of Bloods or a set of Crips or what? Or are they their own thing completely? Their disses were being heard by the city. Now, on the 23rd of April 2018, Doovy, who was making noise on SoundCloud, decided to drop his first track on YouTube titled Gotta Stack It, which sits at almost 700k views today. This was the start of Doovy's rise to becoming a major player in the underground Toronto music scene. Yeah. Gotta watch that love, shit 50, double bad that shit for skinny. I don't know if many really hear me We was just riding around for skinny How I lost you This pay more than designer But it cost new Now on the 21st of December two. I ain't heard no doobie in a long time That was him? He got like a vibe going on to him You hear me? I like it 2018 at about 9 p.m. Police responded to a shooting in the area Of Kipling Avenue and Roundtree Road YB was discovered inside a vehicle, suffering from gunshot wounds after NHS members shot up the car he was in. YB, real name Imran Farah, was transported to hospital where he eventually died from his injuries on the 27th of December 2018. Three other people were also discovered at the same location, suffering from gunshot wounds. These people were treated by emergency personnel and survived their injuries. One of them was Mount Olive member Gucci Glow. As you can see from this photo of him, post shooting many people claim yb was an innocent who was close to a few members of and just a little dark lyrics i was just about to say man this is there are certain spots you don't go to where you know it's more likely to go down man. some corner stores some barber shops some food places man like you know you bet if it's that good, you better call in before and have your girl go pick it up. And don't even have your girl come pick it up. Go have I don't know. Get it delivered. I don't know. Others claim he was a Mount Olive DoorDash it. Affiliate. What is for sure is that NHS saw him as an op, as Doovy disses him in songs. Now on the 16th of September 2019, NHS members got the Looks like NHS is a blood set. The drop of the whereabouts of Driftwood Crip and rising rap star Houdini. He was in the studio with Little D and Double O Boy. Houdini, NHS members Houdini. slid and like followed Houdini. the car on the 410 like highway passes. who they had hoped had Houdini in it. A NHS member fired at the car, injuring both Little D and Double O Boy. The victim was 18-year-old DeRay Rooms Peters of Brampton. Police say the call came in just before 2.30 a.m. for a shooting at the 410 in Sandalwood Parkway East. Another victim was transported to a trauma center with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The search now continues for a black 2019 Honda Pilot. Police say was stolen nearby and fled the area. Police believe the occupants may know more about what took place. Double Obo was taken to hospital with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Now, Germ's real name, Jeremiah Ranger, was a member from Uptown. He was very close with Doovy, Kenzo, JJ, etc. and would rep NHS. On the 26th of April 2020, shortly before 6pm, outside a townhouse complex at 1884 Shepherd Ave West near Jane Street, Germs was meeting with a boy known as Seymour Young to buy some weed. Germs attempted to rob the dealer, but it backfired. On April 26, 2020, 15-year-old Jeremiah Ranger was shot to death behind the Toronto Community Housing Complex where he lived. 
On Tuesday, Seymour Young was sentenced to five years in prison after pleading guilty to manslaughter, killing Jeremiah during an attempted marijuana robbery gone wrong. There was a very legitimate... He played out. He played out and got the lesser charge of manslaughter for five years. That's a win on the streets. I ain't even gonna hold you. R.I.P. to everybody who lost their life in that, but dang. Self-defense angle here. Uh, and if it had gone to trial, a very legitimate self-defense angle here. Uh, and if it had gone to trial, uh, my client may very well have been acquitted and would have walked out of that court a uh, free man. Surveillance video released after... You didn't want to risk that, though. The shooting showed an SUV being driven by Seymour Young's brother, pulling up and stopping. Young's girlfriend was in the back seat. Young, who agreed to sell Ranger marijuana after meeting on Instagram, rolled down the passenger side window, expecting to conduct the transaction. But instead, Jeremiah and a friend jumped into the rear passenger side of the vehicle. According to the facts, once inside, Jeremiah Ranger produced what turned out to be an imitation firearm and made clear to the occupants his intention to rob them. In response... Oh yeah, I would have been in court fighting for my... I would have fought it. You give me the charge on possession and, and, and intent to sell, but I'm fighting that M. <laughs> I'll take my little 12 months or whatever y'all giving out, but oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm telling my lawyer to off rip. Hey, they got in my car, my girl was in there, they produced a firearm, and I, and I fought for my life. I'm telling my lawyer that, and then my lawyer can do with his job. Yeah, no, nah, I would have fought that. I wouldn't have played out. No. I wouldn't have been taking no time, buddy. To Jeremiah brandishing his firearm, Seymour Young pulled out his own firearm and fired once. In handing down her sentence, Madame Justice Maureen Forrestal wrote, Mr. Young aimed low, and as Mr. Ranger turned to flee the vehicle, he was hit in the buttocks. As Jeremiah Ranger fled the SUV, he stumbled and dropped the imitation firearm. Ranger got back to his feet and ran a few more meters before collapsing behind the complex's garbage bin. Ranger suffered a penetrating gunshot wound that had severed an artery, and he was later pronounced dead. Yo. Yo. Don't move angry, fam. So the private story, only bitches are in this. What's the show them? I'm involved. Eat. <laughs> you know? eat. That's, eat. Yo, you guys That's what I always be telling people, man. Like, I was just having this conversation off stream. I was like, bro, in Chicago, everybody got guns. So everybody's not walking around like all crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just up and pole on anybody. Because if you up it in Chicago, in certain areas, you more than likely going to have to blow it. You know what I'm saying? So, if you up and if you do that and you don't have no intentions of really using it, you could really lose your life. All that imitation firearm, all oh, it ain't real. How are they supposed to know that? How was somebody supposed to know that? You can't fake. You can't fake tough. You can't fake or you can't fake these type things. Not in 2020, not any time after 2017, you can't really fake it. Because everybody got one and they're going to defend themselves. So pop it to the private store. Trenches. Now we're going to show faces. So pop it to the private store. Let's f*** up, bro. <laughs> Who's that? So it's pop the private store. Doobie, didn't your best friend get popped? What's his name? James trying to steal a deagle? When they got deagles, 10 bucks. Ten bucks. A deagle. Yo, we got packed for trying to rob weed. Just for that, I'm giving free weed all week. I'm giving free deagles all week. Now in autumn of top five is a menace. Ain't he free now? Acquitted of an M two. I don't have no affiliation to nobody, but shout out top five, man. I like his debauchery. 2020, things would get very hectic between Southside Jane and Finch, and their drift with ops. It all started when a Wallat boy FM would disrespect his ops by pissing on the memorial of germs. The response to this was NHS going to Houdini's memorial and dropping the freeze to disrespect him and Driftwood 3L. Now on the 24th of September, NHS BK would go on a shooting spree. Now here is reports from the Canadian Legal Information Institute. Bear in mind BK was a minor, so his government name was written as his initials, JD. Now at approximately 6.25pm in the area of 380 Driftwood Avenue, 
Video surveillance captured from this incident shows two males drive up on the main road of Driftwood Avenue and exit a Toyota Corolla. Both males were armed with firearm. Both shooters fired several shots and then ran back into the car. BK is the second of the two shooters who appear in the video. No one was injured in this incident. The second shooting occurred at approximately 7.30pm at a townhouse complex in another area of the city. The victim was observed walking in the townhouse complex toward the unit. The same Toyota Corolla is observed on video driving very slowly through the complex following the path of the victim. They didn't even switch the striker? Him. The car then stops and a single male hangs out of the rear passenger side window and fires several rounds of shots. 27 muzzle flashes are observed. Seven casings were located at the scene. The victim was shot both in his left. Wait, 27 muzzle flashes were seen? It, hold on. Observed window and fires several rounds of shots. 27 muzzle flashes are observed. Seven casings were located at the scene. The victim was shot both in his left buttocks as well as his upper legs and had to be transported to a hospital for treatment. It is alleged that JD, who we know as BK, was the male who fired these shots, injuring the victim. The final shooting occurred at approximately 8.32 p.m. Mr. Anthony Martin and Mr. Tazrell Salmon were playing dominoes with other individuals in the courtyard of 89 Gosford Boulevard. Four males, at least three of whom were armed with guns, emerged and fired numerous gunshots in the direction of the courtyard, killing Mr. Anthony Martin and injuring Mr. Tazrell Salmon. Mr. Salmon was shot underneath his right knee and received treatment through the bullet remains in his leg. Mr. Martin was pronounced deceased at the scene. 17 shell cases were recovered. JD, who we know as BK, was one of the four shooters. BK would later go on the run before coming to his senses and handing himself in. Oh, JD is a menace, crash out menace. He was charged with second degree murder and aggravated assault. Because of the shooting in Driftwood Boy, by BK, Wallat Boys would riot. On the 26th of September 2020, Wallat Boys fired 10 shots at a townhouse on 1884 Shepherd Avenue West, just east of Jane Street, where a ceremony for Germs Memorial was being held. Toronto police say two people were wounded. One of them was none other than Doovy. He was struck twice in the leg. On the same day Doovy got shot, a shooting at Jane Street and Shoreham Drive took and place. Allegedly, gone. whilst his little bro, known as Day Day, was shot. Now, while Doovy was nursing his injuries in hospital, he would capitalize on all the attention he was getting and drop his song Nightmares. It would blow up and take his career to the next level. The song currently sits on 3.2 million views. On the 29th of October 2020, NHS JJ would drop his biggest hit in Dream that was well received in the city. NHS now had three lit rappers. Now, for I gotta start reacting to a Canadian drill. I remember at one point I did heavily, but oh, nobody was sending them anymore. Send them over if y'all watching. Sarah Bread is a well respected member from Ardwick, a neighborhood who par with the enemies of Southside Jane and Finch, despite being blood themselves. Thoroughbred is a well-known rapper and moneymaker from the ends. He even has a song with King Von. Long story short, Thoroughbred had money on his head. And in 2019, NHS JJ came to collect the bounty. He got a drop on Thoroughbred and shot up the car he was in. Rumours that Thoroughbred and his daughter were in the car and that she got grazed. Thoroughbred would find out the shoot was JJ and would put a bounty on his head. A year later, the script would be flipped. On the 1st of November 2020, Niagara police were called to Fraccio- hey man, this during COVID. This during COVID. This when everybody had money, everybody had blicks. Everybody had time. And everybody had nothing to do the next day. You know it was diabolical. Tony Drive and Cashier Court in Lincoln around 12.10am following a complaint about a suspicious person. When they arrived on the scene, Police say they learned that gunshots had been heard in the area. Now investigators started a search and say they found NHS JJ, real name J Alexandra, dead inside at home. A week after JJ died, this spooky video surfaced on the internet of him being recorded going to his home. Now let's decipher this. 
NHS JJ look like he had a little bit of money. So being recorded going to. This looks like an outstanding neighborhood, don't it? What a minute now. He's home. Now let's decipher this song released by Thoroughbred two years after JJ's death. Firstly, the song is titled Against the Family, which could allude to the traumatic shooting that hurt his daughter. Now let's look at the lyrics. These niggas bitches, they ain't on no heavy shit. They threw 60 shots and missed, calling Missy Elliott. But they ain't missed the messenger. He got spilled a year later. Try to say I put a paper. I said karma is a bitch. She came and let them killers in. Guess they ain't learn to close that back door. Bark can make you go niggas, man. Must be blitz. JJ just got packed in 2020. But we're gonna leave him in 2020. He didn't make it to New Year's. That that that, that little boy, yeah, he made a song called what did, what's the song he made? Dreams. He left him in his dreams. Nah. Hey. <laughs> top five is a goddamn old menace. That top five has no filter, and I like it. I love the negativity. Now, before JJ died, he converted to Islam. So may Allah have mercy on his soul. Now on the eleventh. No, he's not. <laughs> but I, I get the sentiment passed along. But come on now. Just because you convert to a religion or you're a practicing religion, if you're not living how the religion has wants you to live or how, how God says you should live, you're not going where you No. Anyway. 11th of December 2020, NHS Kenzo and BK dropped on the streets which was littered with disses Houdini and Little D as well as Boulevard Biz from Ardwick all caught verbal abuse. Now on the 19th of June 2021 Kenzo real name Kevin George was attending his son's first birthday party which was located in Rexdale, Tandred Crescent to be exact. Kenzo's baby mama who was no longer with him was dating a Queens Drive crip known as D-Boy real name Damar Cadogan. Now last year on June 19th, just before 8 p.m., emergency crews were called to a residential complex on Tan Ridge Crescent in the city's west end. There were a sea of young kids, bouncy castles and balloons, and it was quite a large gathering. The court heard today that there was an altercation between George and Damar Cadogan, who was 24 years old at the time. The Crown's theory is that Cadogan was the new boyfriend of the mother of George's child. There was an exchange of gunfire and other people at the party also allegedly began I blame the baby mama if there's somebody to be blamed I'm just gonna jump off the porch and say it. she moved on the baby daddy was not ready to for her to move on well I blame both of them the baby daddy wasn't ready for them to move on some there was probably some sneaking and sneaking and sneaking and sneaky linking going on between the baby mama and baby daddy still you know how the script go on this. Firing shots. A number of children were injured after being caught in the middle. A five-year-old girl was shot in the head and went into a coma. She did end up surviving. An 11-year-old boy was also shot. And the court also heard today that one of the bullets from George's gun grazed his own infant son's head. Fucking idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> you're, you're down bad. Not only did you put all of these kids in jeopardy over a female, probably that y'all arguing about. It could be over some rival gang stuff, but when there's a baby mama in the middle of it, you know it's some toxic stuff going on also. But like, come on, brother. Shooting up the party when you, and your kid is there is insane. Shooting up the party, period, is insane. But when your kid is in the, in the, in the, in the crossfire and multiple other kids, you're wild. Kevin George is believed to be a Toronto rapper who goes by the name Kenzo. We spoke to anti-gun violence activist Marcel Wilson about the case. Now Kenzo is the first to fire a shot. Everyone then starts running for cover. Kenzo's arms extended and his firearm pointed at D-Boy. At about the same time, Kenzo's guy, who is the third shooter, starts to become visible for the first time through the foliage of the large tree. He is dressed in all black. D-Boy was shot in both legs and remained at the scene until police arrived. As for Kenzo, he travelled from Tandred Crescent in Toronto to Lagerfield Drive in Brampton. 
Ken's a real name, Kevin George. It's, that's, it's just something about that to me that's not gangster at all. You know what I'm saying? Was located and arrested inside Unit 6 blatant. of 250 Lagerfeld Drive three days later. Now on the 19th of July 2021, at 11.43pm, Duvi, along with Lane member Uvi, real name Javon McAnolis, and two other members, they were all in Dixon. They entered Istar Restaurant, which is a popular Somali eatery. As Mr. McNally stood waiting with his friends at the cash counter of Istar, a silver Mazda drove into the parking lot. Abdi Rashid Adam was a backseat passenger of the Mazda, while his friend Eunice and Zach were in the front seat. As the Mazda pulled into a parking spot at the front entrance of Istar, its lights were visible from the inside. Now Mr. McNally's walked towards the front door of Istar. As Mr. McNally's exited Istar, he appeared to utter words to Mr. Adam, who was standing near the rear passenger door of the Mazda. At the time, they were strangers. The 10 second exchange of words occurred at 11.49 p.m. After it ended, Mr. McNally's walked away in the direction of Breeze Way in the center of the plaza. The breezeway led to the rear of the plaza where Mr. McNally's car was parked. As Mr. McNally's walked away, Mr. Adam got into the back seat of the Mazda. The Mazda then drove off. At 11.53 p.m., Mr. Adam entered his mother's apartment. At 11.57 p.m., he left wearing different clothes and carrying a black satchel. Mr. Adam walked directly back to the plaza. Rather than going to the front of the plaza, he walked along the back darkened laneway behind the star. This led directly to the area where Mr. McNally's car was. See, this is why I don't argue with people. If I can't leave and I gotta stay in this area, I'm not arguing with you. Parked. Mr. McNally's was standing near the passenger side door of his car. As Mr. Adam walked along the back laneway, he put his hand in his black satchel. The satchel contained his loaded and chambered Glock handgun. Mr. Adam was off camera for about 30 seconds. It was during this period that Mr. Adam fired his handgun four times. One bullet struck Mr. McNally's. Other bullets struck Mr. McNally's car in the area of the passenger side mirror and the front bumper. The first officers to arrive at the scene attempted CPR, but Mr. McNally was ultimately pronounced dead a short time later. Mr. McNally was killed by one gunshot wound That's to his right chest. Now, Mr. That's McNally, who went by Uvi in the streets, Last Instagram post was a picture of him and Doovy captioned in the trenches where I feel the safest. Now this was traumatic for Doovy. It was another close friend that he lost right, and his ops everybody. got to mocking him. We're 20 minutes into this video. I just want to put it out there. RIP to everybody who's lost their life thus far. But I'm almost positive, except for the innocent people, they know what come with this. His death. Now Doovy was arguably the face of Toronto rap. He was now the main priority for his ops as they felt he was on the verge of blowing up and crossing over and wanted to cut his water off. Top 5 released the song Movie on the 6th of August 2021 and Boondog who was a Driftwood Crip and older brother of Presser had a verse where he wasn't shy of letting us know. I like Presser, I like Doovy, I like uh, what was his name? Hocus Pocus? What was his name? I think that was his name. I like a lot of Toronto rappers, low key. Of their motives for Doovy. He a top op, so free Goozy. And tell JJ we soon send him Doovy. Now, on September 2022, the trial of NHS Kenzo started. One of the four people injured in the shooting was his one year old son who had the bullet graze him, as well as a five year old girl. They moved inside a downtown Toronto courtroom, turned super quiet after prosecutors played a video footage a five-year-old girl lying on her side and bleeding from her head moments after she had been shot while attending a baby's birthday party. The now seven-year-old shooting victim didn't attend the hearing, but her mother, Tamika Ashby, gave voice to her daughter's suffering. Why you shoot me, she said, reading from the child's That's statement, sad. handwritten in pencil and submitted to the court. You make me have hearing problem. My life will never be the same. I always forget stuff. 
you almost take me away from my mummy. Ashby described the five excruciating days while her five-year-old remained in a coma and had surgery to remove the bullet lodged in her head. Bullet fragments remain in her brain and during her long, slow recovery, her daughter had to wear a specialized helmet while suffering constant headaches. I cry because I can only imagine what she's going through, she said tearfully. Although a great many people attended a birthday party, only five testified at the trial and none of them assisted the court in understanding how or why this incident happened. None of them identified any of the shooters. Consequently, the Crown relies on a mosaic of circumstantial evidence to advance his case against Kevin George. Kenzo was hit with 14 counts. Now NHS Kenzo was sentenced to 11 years in prison. Now on the 13th of December 2022, the sentencing of NHS BK started. BK entered a guilty plea for second degree murder. Now BK was under 18 at the time of the murder. Despite that, the Crown requested that he be sentenced as an adult. However, it was rejected. BK was handed a youth sentence of 7 years. 4 years of the 7 year sentence are to be spent in secure custody. The remaining 3 years are to be served under conditional supervision in the community. BK later converted to Islam and looks like he'll be living a new lifestyle. I hope the street life is behind him. Not in the same neighborhood he not. Brother gotta move. Op, your ops don't forget, they don't care who what you converted to. With Kenzo and BK both now behind bars and JJ dead, Duvi was the final hope for NHS. However, he will get caught up with an event that occurred two months before BK sentencing. On the 6th of October 2022, Toronto police responded to a shooting call at Five Needle Fairway in the area of Jane Street and Finch Avenue West at around 1.40pm. Officers located a man suffering from a gunshot wound. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The victim was later identified as 28-year-old Osman Bangora of Toronto. At the time, police said they believed the incident was targeted. Now in 2023, Toronto police arrested Duvi and charged him with second-degree murder. Duvi, along with co-accused DP from Connection, will stand trial for the murder of Osman Bangora. Now Duvi had a promising career ahead of him. Many rumours and speculations on the internet about the motive behind what he is being accused of. Some say Osman was a connection OG and that he backdoored JJ. And others say it's because he tried to rob Duvi's chain. As of now, these are baseless rumours. Hopefully we'll gain more clarity once Duvi goes to trial. It's, it's just a shame Duvi went down a typical path most Toronto. They're probably going to be waiting for trial for two more years to rappers go down, either fighting for their freedom behind bars or being six feet deep. And I still hop in the car like I ain't got nothing to lose. My shit hit it, suit up, boot up, leave one missing. Suit up, boot up, leave one missing. That brings me to the end of this video. I send my condolences to the family of everyone I mentioned. The uncensored version of this is on my Patreon. I mean, yeah, condolences. Make sure y'all go follow Skyboy. I mean, most of these gangsters on here, they know... They know the life they choose. They know the consequences that they might can endure. Shout out to, I mean, RIP to all them innocents, the innocent people who lost their lives.